Hi, I'm Megan Baker. This is Influence Her, produced by Baker Public Relations. Kimberly Adams Russell is the president of Frank Adams Jewelers. It has been in business for 100 years, started by her grandfather, which was at first a small watch repair store. Take us back now to what it is today. What's it been like being part of your third generation, fourth generation with your son? Let's talk a little bit about when you first started the, the business. What was that like? So when I first started in the business, I was young, right out of college. I actually wanted to be, I was a communications major in college. I wanted to be either an anchor person, go into news, uh, or potentially be a motivational speaker. So my dad had asked me to come to work for him for a little while to kind of help with the ad campaign and just sort of bring a little young perspective to the store. And I didn't want to do that right away. So I just felt I had other dreams, other ambitions, and I knew that once I started, there's no turning back, (laughs) right? So once you dive into a family relationship, you don't do that for a few years and then say, I'm leaving. So I wanted to be super committed to that. So I said I would help, Mm -hmm. and I did some training, and I did some speaking at different places, um, and then I sort of got roped in. There was no turning back after that. There was a pivotal pivotal time in Frank Adams' history, located in downtown Albany at first. Yes. You moved to Stuyvesant. Mm-hmm. That was a big risk. That was a very big risk at the time. So I was young, in my young 20s at the time, and we were in downtown Albany, and downtown was turning around. It wasn't what it was in the 40s and mm-hmm. the 30s and even the 50s when we were there. So it was time to make a big move at that point. And my dad was not 100% on board. He actually stayed in that location for a little over a year while we, my mom and I, went to Stuyvesant Plaza and opened that store kind of on our own. And that was a tough time. There were a lot of hours. The store was open till nine. We went to seven days a week. My dad was still in downtown Albany running that store. So that was a very difficult transition for us. But we knew that we needed to have a bigger target audience, people that could get to us easier, people that could park their car and come and see us. We needed to reach a younger audience, a more sophisticated women audience also that wasn't coming to our downtown location. So it was certainly a risk, but a calculated risk. How did you convince your father that the future was Stevenson Plaza? I think he knew all along in his heart that downtown was was over for us at that time. I don't think he really wanted to admit that out loud, but I think he knew in his heart. And once he knew that I was committed and my mom helped at that time, and she's a very talented salesperson, really nice interior designer, like she was very helpful in that move as well. And he had the support that he needed. He was on board. So Kimberly, you started working in the women's section and there was a split section. There was. What was that? There was. So when I started working in our downtown location, you walked in the front door and you went to the right and there was like fine gold and high end jewelry and like the diamond jewelry and the men worked on that side. And then when you went to the left, it was like this company called Kremens Overlay. And it was like an overlay of gold over silver or base metal or something like that, like a plated product. And then there was china and crystal and silverware. We had all of this tabletop and bridal registry at the time. So the women were allowed to do that, and the men sold the fine jewelry. But I, of course, had to butt that system. So (laughs) I was uh, young, spearheaded, and aggressive, I guess, to my dad. So, um, But it worked out. It definitely worked out. I started taking classes in diamonds. I went to the GIA, the Gemological Institute of America. I got all my titles there and felt like I was knowledgeable enough that I could push myself into that arena. And it was tough. Like The staff was hard on me. And, you know, they weren't so welcoming. And, you know, I was, again, just young and like really spearheaded. But eventually I made the turn where the women could kind of work the whole store. And it was a good, that was a good move. So Kimberly, fast forward to today. Now your son is in the business. What was that moment like um, having him there now and being a big part of it? I rely on him so much now. It's unbelievable. Like I was hesitant at first, thinking that this was the right decision for him to make. And once he convinced me that he was dedicated and that this is the legacy that he wanted to continue and how much he feels that his family business is so important to him. He's so close to my dad. 
and my dad has taught him so much about diamond buying and you know all about diamond selling and he speaks to my father every single day about all of that and once he was committed honestly i look to him every day for advice mm -hmm. for passion for his ability to uh, keep the staff together and calm and for his training and honestly just for his spirit it's been amazing it's a good journey you and I were talking earlier that retail is not easy and it's not for faint of heart, right? Right. You have had some really committed team members throughout yes. the years. I'm Do you glad. feel that that has helped you and helped the business? A hundred percent. Yes. Our VP, Tim Ryan, has been there for 25 years. I have a buyer who came over kind of a little after him who worked with him in the past. She's been there over 25 years. Um, we have a lot of staff that's been there over 20 years. A lot and so they've been extremely supportive they're helping the next generation the young generation they've been supportive of my son the younger staff that we have coming in teaching them all the things that they've learned over the years as well in 2003 you were diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and what was that um, experience and and getting you know finding that out what has that been like and then how are you an advocate for the organization? It was kind of a strange time. I was working a million hours, as you know, we talked about that with retail and how it can be a grind. I had little babies, I had twins that were only one at the time. So I think my body was just like exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, I think I had signs of the MS earlier that I completely ignored. And it took until I literally woke up one day and honestly couldn't get out of bed. So getting a diagnosis of MS was actually sort of a relief, even though it sounds strange, but I was kind of relieved to find that out because, you know, it could have been brain injury, aneurysm, stroke. It could have been a variety of other reasons why I didn't have any function at all, honestly, um, from one whole side of my body. And so once I found out that I had MS, it was manageable for me to treat at that point. So in some strange way, it became more of a positive than a negative. And it taught me a lot of ways to teach myself about time management and stress relief and eating healthier. And after that, I was in a better place. Well, that sounds strange, but it's almost like I needed that in a way to put me in a place that gave me time to concentrate on myself. So um, I generally work hard and put my job before everything else and sometimes before my family as well. And uh, that was that was a time that I think I needed in, the, in, in that way. You, um, just this past year, put together your own walk uh, to raise funds for MS. Let's um, dig into that a little bit and, and what that was like to be able to um, accomplish that. My team is extremely supportive so we do believe that that will be an annual walk for us and they're very helpful in the fundraising aspect and they support me a hundred percent in every way so they did all of the work and you know i just said look i want to do uh, an annual ms walk and and be able to donate that money to ms and this year they're actually going to honor me as their honoree for uh, during their ms luncheon so it's definitely been a commitment that i've made for many, many years. Your hard work, your family's hard work has not gone unnoticed. The Albany Business Review recognized and honored your your family this year. Um, what a proud moment that must have been for you. It was wonderful. And I'm so glad my parents were around for that because they are in their 80s. And it was, you know, like just a very special, special time that we were all together. We, you know, did a photography with all of our family together. So there's those three generations there, which was great. They came to the honorary dinner and it was just one of those times that I think, um, you know, you can't put into words. It was really an honor. So another big achievement is coming up around the corner <laughs> and leaving us with this is a new store on Wolf Road. So you're going to be leaving the Stevenson location yes. and opening a beautiful store on um, Wolf Road in, in the town of Colony. Yes, we are so excited. We're thrilled. This has been a dream that I've had forever and ever and ever. Uh, we've always rented all of our history. So 100 years have gone by. We've never had our own building. And I just am so looking forward to our own destiny. We'll be able to do so many special events there, We're really going to embrace the charity component because we can hold our special events there. 
And it's a legacy that I'll be able to leave to my children. And, you know, hopefully even my daughters, we don't know if they'll end up in the business one day, you know, yet to be determined. And it's just a nice legacy to leave to everyone. Really, really excited. And the design is spectacular. I mean, it is just absolutely beautiful. There's a great courtyard area that you can do outdoor events. Yes. To go um, describe a little bit about what that's going to be used for even more. Yes, and we are partnering. We do have a couple of tenants that will be next to us, so hopefully we can incorporate that as more of a plaza experience. But this will give us indoor-outdoor space to be able to flow over so that we can have larger events, whether we bring in you know partnerships with cars or partnerships with other businesses um, and do even fashion shows or things that we can have tickets that we can you know, donate that to charity. That'll make a nice, uh, uh, give us opportunity to grow in a bigger way. But the space for us is beautiful. It gives us privacy for our clients. There's some private rooms which are very nice and a beautiful lounge for people that are waiting for their service. We've separated our service from other things so that that can be a more intimate experience, professional experience for people as well. So some of the things that we really wanted to have moving forward. And the visibility alone. Is, is amazing. It's pretty it's, incredible. It's yeah. really incredible. 7,500 square feet. Yes. It's about double the size of what we have now. But interestingly enough, it's less linear feet of product, which is interesting. People yeah. would think we'd have like so much more. But we decided to make it more about the experience that you would have when you're there as opposed to just jamming it all with product and all the cases. So it's a little bit more open, a little bit more breathing room, and we're you know trying to make it more of a relaxing experience for people. So February 1st is going to be the opening date. Yes. Um, so you can look forward to expecting a ribbon cutting yeah. and then having like a nice grand opening to the public sometime in the spring. In the spring. We want to wait till the weather is a little bit better in the Northeast <laughs> so that we can use our courtyard and make sure we get all the kinks out and make sure everyone is comfortable in their space. I think it'll be a big party. Kimberly Adams Russell, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. I appreciate it as well. Thank you.